There are two ways to view life, says Einstein. One as though nothing were a miracle, the other as if everything is one. Look at yourself. You are 13.7 billion years old. Okay, the hydrogen in your molecules came from the Big Bang itself 13.7 billion years ago. The heavier elements, like carbon, which are in you, came from exploding stars. The materials that make your body were floated to the surface of the Earth by the molten core. You see yourself as a single organism, but you are made up of trillions of individual cells that have learned to coexist as you. You're 72.8% water. You're conscious and exist within a human culture. You are the current known threshold of evolutionary emergent complexity. Furthermore, we human beings have developed a number of different religions. Each of these religions is a wisdom path for personal wholeness and societal cohesion. And each major religion has extended its compassion over time from family to tribe, from city to nation, and at last to include the whole world within the circle of moral concern. From the East we say, may all beings live happily and safe, and may their hearts rejoice within them. And from the West we say, none of you truly believes until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. And <coughs> under God, everyone is related. So how is it, since we're so smart and wise, that the world is as bad as it is? How is it that we don't have an economic system that provides every person the fundamentals of physical existence and the tools for meaningful work so we can get on with the business of living together? Why do we permit a system that looks after the perpetuation and consolidation of personal wealth and power, but leaves eight million humans, many of them little children, to die from hunger, disease, and poverty every single year? And why do we continue to invest in and perpetuate violence? Why is it always the peace demonstrators that are arrested, not the war demonstrators? We see the war monuments. Where are the peace monuments? Who benefits from all this death? Has war become a continuation of domination politics and economics by other means? If the vast majority of humans want peace, why don't we have it? Some atheist scientists say we religious people are at fault for war and poverty. It's true. We have not practiced what we preached. We have not stood by our ideals. We have been swept away again and again in support of human leaders and tribalism in one unjust war and policy after another. But our science friends are not innocent either. Dependent on funding, they are as appropriated by powers as we are. The moral segregation of science does not absolve them from their ethical responsibility as human beings to work for a more just, compassionate, sustainable world. Here's what I'm thinking. Imagine that a Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, and atheist met at a busy intersection. They were discussing among themselves which of them was the greatest, the most true, the most moral. 
Suddenly there's a screeching of tires and a horrible thump. They all turn in time to see a child tumbling in the street. The car rushes off. Everyone stops what they're doing. They even forget what they were talking about. One runs to the child. One gets the license number of the car. The others rush out to stop the traffic in all directions. That's exactly what we should do in the world today. It would be immoral for us to be diverted by the enjoyment of our debates while children are dying. Let us save the children, then we can debate which of us is the most true and moral. As a Christian follower of Jesus, I commit myself to labor for a better world for all people, with all people. And I invite you right now to join with me and all of us who are committed to this great and necessary work. The old saying was, kill them all, let God sort them out. The new saying is, help them all, let God sort us out. Will we really ever see a just, compassionate, sustainable earth? It will be a miracle.